A couple of weeks ago I realized I had all the equipment in the lab to make some visualizations of sound waves. And uh, anyway, it turned out pretty cool, so I thought I would uh, describe the setup. And as an add bonus, you can actually also measure the speed of sound, and uh, I might include that at the end of the video. So here's the setup. It's a, a function generator, a lock-in, a speaker, and a microphone. And so what we're doing is we're taking the output of the uh, uh, function generator, which is set to a kilohertz sine wave, and we're splitting that into two pieces. Uh, the first piece goes to the reference input of the lock and amplifier, and the second piece goes to the speaker, so you can hear the one kilohertz, which is really irritating. Um, and then the microphone output goes to the input of the lock-in. And then I've got these two LEDs taped to the microphone, and they're powered by the output of the lock-in, so I'll describe how that works. So, what a lock-in really is, is it's a mixer followed by a low-pass filter bank. And so, when you mix two signals, you get the sum and difference frequency. Um, in this case, the microphone is picking up the same frequency as the reference input, so the difference frequency is zero, so that's a DC voltage. Um, the only thing that's different between these two signals is, is their magnitude and their phase. So, when these two signals are in phase, the, the, the value we get out of the lock-in will be maximized, and when uh, they're 180 degrees out of fa phase, we'll get the same magnitude of signal, but it'll be negative. Um, if the phase difference is 90 or 270 degrees, then we'll get a null on the meter. And we can locate the nulls exactly because a zero is a zero, regardless of, of what the, uh, the, the sound voltage uh, magnitude is. And so if we were to measure the distance between two nulls, that would tell us what half a wavelength is, and that's how we can measure the speed of sound. Um, so when the meter is full scale to the right, 10 volts comes out of this jack, and when it's full scale to the left, it's minus 10 volts. So what I've done is I've wired up these two LEDs uh, with reverse polarities. So when this voltage is positive, uh, the red LED lights up. And so that corresponds to uh, the phase being um, close to zero. When uh, the blue LED lights up, that tells us the phase between the microphone uh, voltage and the reference voltage, reference signal, is 180 degrees. So if I turn on the speaker and move the microphone around, you'll see the LEDs uh, switch between red and blue. And they do that uh, whenever the phase swings between um, uh, you know, uh, positive or negative. So uh, let me turn this on and then I'll mute the audio on the video because one kilohertz is really irritating. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the microphone around in space and take a time exposure from above, and what we'll get is a visualization of the sound waves. And, and then at the end of the video, I'll just show you that if I slide the microphone along this uh, ruler and measure the distance between two nulls, we can calculate the uh, speed of sound. So anyway, I'll show you the results of the time exposure, and then we'll do the speed of sound experiment. Okay, so let's do the math. Um, I found that the distance between the two nulls was 6.5 inches, more or less. So that means the wavelength at a kilohertz is 13 inches. So uh, converting to centimeters, or actually converting to meters, that's uh, 0.33 meters, and the frequency was a kilohertz. So we get 330 meters per second for the speed of sound, which is pretty close to the actual value.